How many of you have done this? Elang lit paper one tomorrow? Well, I know what I gotta do. Don't do that, okay? What I'm gonna show you is basically a hack to analyze your paper one text more thoroughly than the normal way a lot of students do. So my teacher gave this to me and she got it from another teacher online. I tried to search it. I think the, author, the person who made this is a person called Kay Bailey, but I'm not so sure. The main thing is that I don't take credit for this, but whoever made this is a genius because when I implemented this uh, way to analyze my text and my mocks, my scores went really high. And my teacher commended me uh, after that. He's like, yeah, you're doing a really good job. So anyway, the point I'm trying to make is this helps a lot. Are you ready? TPLM. This stands for text type, elements of text type, author, purpose, context, audience, language, image, meaning. This is an organized way to analyze your paper one text to dissect and bring out and pick out those juicy uh, main points of your answer for your answer so you after you do this analysis you will be in a much better position to answer your question than by just going along the text and underlining whatever you think is important so this helps a lot so the way you're gonna do is you're gonna pick out these individual components corresponding to your text so you're gonna identify what is the text type what is the elements of the text type, what is the purpose and I'm gonna show you how to do that now the first thing is text type what is the text type? Is it an opinion column? Is it a speech? Is it an interview? There are many types of text types, uh, so you need to identify which one of those is your text. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, what are the elements of that text type? How do we know that it is the text type that you identified? And more importantly, why do these two things relate? Why did the author choose uh, this specific text type? And why is that essential for the author's purpose? For example, if the author wrote an opinion column, maybe it's because he wanted to have an outlet to voice his anger on a particular controversial topic. So he would need to write an opinion column uh, for that. So you have to identify how these two things relate to the author's purpose. Nice thing, audience. Who is this text written for and why is it written for them? And more importantly, how do we know it's written for them? What are the quotes that prove that this is this this is targeted to this specific audience so uh, you can dissect this either explicitly where the author tells who this is directed for or implicitly where you can score a bit more marks so for example if the text has a lot of mommy words daddy words you know like kiddish words and have and if it has cartoons that are it kind of shows that this is targeted to a younger audience and if you can identify that and use that as your evidence and show that this text is directed to kids uh, that will help your answer. Purpose. So why has the author written this text? Why does it even exist? And how do we know that it is because of this reason? For example, insurance company talks about how insurance helps people, how it improves their lives. Their purpose isn't really to just to show how insurance helps people. It's really more to drive awareness of their business and improve future prospects of customers and profits and things like that. So I'm using really, really simple examples just to drive the point home, but you have to kind of understand the underlying purpose of what the, of what the text is meant for. The next thing is context, time, place, situation, and why is time, place, situation important to truly understand the text? For example, if you had a text about uh, ranting about how bad aviation security is, okay, on face value is just about how the author doesn't like aviation security. But then you see the date of the text, ooh, December 2001. Now, from your general knowledge, you know, okay, I know that September of 2001, that was a terrorist attack. Wow, now this brings in more meaning to the text because it is something that just affected thousands of lives. And so that, that context of the date, that's gonna add more value to the text. And you have to show how these two things relate. So context is really important. How does how does the context add more depth and meaning to the piece? How does the context add more information to the piece than just what is written? And the next thing is author. Who is the author and why is this important? So does the author add or retract credibility to the piece? Does the author have his own agenda, his own bias? 
For example, if the if your text was a piece about the mistakes of a particular democratic candidate, but you see uh, about the author's description, he he's a self-proclaimed Republican, so that will obviously affect the way he portrays the republic the democratic candidate. So that is a hidden bias, and that basically shows that the author has his own agenda for writing the piece, and you have to show that. You have to identify that because that's something you're going to need to put in your answer. So the author component is really important. Yes, some pieces will just require you. It is written by this, right? This text is written by blah, blah, blah. But how is that significant? That's where you need to go the extra mile. The next thing, language. What are the, what are the literary features? What are the rhetorical techniques? What are the persuasive techniques? The tone, the mood, and how do these things relate to other areas? Uh, for example, about that aviation security, maybe the language is very colloquial maybe it's very rude maybe it includes swear words something like that how does this add meaning to the text how does the language relate to the purpose of the audience remember about the kitty word so the language is specific to the audience to help the audience further relate to the text um, also how does it relate to context so if you need to identify what techniques the author is using to make his text more convincing yeah that's a very essential component the next thing is the image analysis. Why did the author include an image at all? And why has he chosen this specific image? What is the focus of the image? What is included on the image, but what is excluded of the image? Uh, what mood does the image create? How does it position the audience to react? Maybe about the insurance company, it pictures a woman who's happy with with you know with uh, with her family. That's going to create and that's going to create you know, it's going to position the reader to react very positively to the company who helped her. So that may be the purpose of the image. Again, I'm using very simple examples. You're going to need to think a lot more deeply than that in the te in the exam. But you have to just understand the point I'm trying to make. What is the reason for the image? And if you have an image, remember to dedicate an entire paragraph to that image. It is very important. Meaning, why is it important to the author and why is it important to society as a whole? Paper one usually deals with societal issues. So if you can bring down that relationship between the piece and the society and the author's take on that society, on that piece in regards to society, I know it's a little confusing, but you need to understand what I'm trying to say. Purpose is mainly dealing with the author, so meaning is the bro deeper significance. Try to dig into the levels of the piece. Are there any allusions to the other text? What's the deeper, deeper significance of the text? And you need to bring that out with strong quotes. So Give your take on the deeper significance of the text with strong quotes. Oftentimes, the, this portion of the Teep Kalim analysis will directly, will strongly, strongly relate uh, to the two guiding questions that the paper will give you. So keep that in mind. So after you do this whole analysis, there are certain things you need to remember. You need to tailor all your points to the guiding questions, especially audience, purpose, meaning, and language. The guiding questions will help you pick out the points for the individual components of Teep Kalim. And what you need to understand is that many of these components interrelate with each other. You know, text type will interrelate with elements of the text type. The purpose will relate to the meaning. The image will relate to the context. So all these components interrelate with each other and you need to bring up those relationships. And after you've done this analysis, you will have basically thoroughly dissected the critical components of your text in a better way than just underlining what you think is important. And also you need to understand that a lot of these things you have to anyway mention in your text, right? You have to mention the context, the audience, the author, the text type, the purpose, the, lang uh, the language. You have to include these things anyway in your text. So this is basically a more structured way to bring these out. So after you have done this, what you need to understand is that you're answering the question using these critical components to support what you're trying to say. This isn't everything you're saying. Teep Kalim is just a subset of your answer. You still need to answer in response to the guiding questions, but use Teep Kalim and these components to support the points you're trying to make. For example, about the piece about heightening aviation security, maybe uh, it was written in December 2001. So the purpose of the text is to hide in aviation security, bring public awareness about that. But the context is the 9-11 terrorist attack and the meaning to society will obviously take on a deeper term. So bring out these relationships in your answer. But remember, Teep Kalim 
It's just a way to dissect it. It is a lot of the main components you need to have in an answer, but it isn't the total answer itself. You still need to structure and respond to the guiding questions. So remember, cheap Kalim, I need to stress this, this isn't everything you need to include in your answer. It's just some of the main things you should include in your answer. This isn't a way to structure your answer. This is the main components of any answer, things like that. Okay, and after you would have done this, after you have done your cheap Kalim analysis, you have basically analyzed your text and picked out the most useful components for your answer and this is 10 times better you know doing a t prelim analysis than just looking at the guiding questions going through the text all right this seems important this seems important yeah this is important this is it's this this is not the good way okay you still need to read your text but pick out these individual components cheap column okay so hopefully i drove this point across i know uh, I'm not the easiest person to understand, uh, but basically, I hope that uh, you I've added one small tool to the toolbox that you're going to use to answer your language paper. And just hopefully, hopefully, uh, I've added a bit more value uh, to your language, your Elang and Lit knowledge. And hopefully you can use this in your text. And this helps you a lot. That's all I want. Any problems, message me, uh, comment, and I'll respond. If I haven't driven the point across, ask me to clarify in the comments. I've tried my best. This is the second time recording this video. Okay, hope you guys survive. Have fun.